Hey, welcome back once again. I am Ollie Matthews, health coach for some of the world's leading entrepreneurs. And sleep, sleep is something that I speak about a hell of a lot. And I joke about this in the title and I've said it to many people that I should actually just describe some of the things that I do as the guy that sends people to sleep. And it's true. I've seen many people that have struggled with sleeping through the night, waking up multiple times, actually get a full night's sleep. I've had one person that struggled for 20 years going backwards and forwards to the National Health Service, the NHS here in the UK, and get full night's sleep. Myself, I used to struggle all the time, especially after my dad died when I was 15. From that time until probably about five years ago, six years ago, I don't remember a night in that 15 years that I actually slept right through the night. Apart from when I drank alcohol um, and slept for like 12 hours, but that wasn't exactly the most restorative sleep. And that's one of the things that people do kind of have a look at and they say, oh, I drink beer or I drink wine, I sleep better. Well, it's not just the sleep you get, but also the quality of that sleep. And uh, let me just double check here that uh, video. We want that one. There we go. And that's coming through. That's better. There's not a delay now. Um, yeah, so sorry. What, what we look at is that, yes, we've had this time unconscious, but alcohol actually is a sedative. And whilst I don't tell my clients to get completely off alcohol, if there is problems with sleep and you're having a lot, maybe the timings could be better or the amounts and we have to look at different uh, what is actually going on. But let's get back to actually what we were talking about, the waking through the night. And so many people, it's actually kind of an epidemic that people will wake up through the night. And then they'll ask their friend, do you wake up through the night? Or they wake up and end up going to the toilet or something like that. And it's so, so common that people see it as normal, that waking up during the night is something that will happen just because they've drunk too much water or just whatever it is. But just because something is normal, is, is common, does not make it normal. And that's something we need to look at on many, many aspects of health as to say, look, is this something our body should be doing? And your body should, in theory, be able to get like seven, eight hours of sleep, unbroken. Obviously, if you are a parent and you have kids and they're waking you up, then fair enough. I absolutely get that. But on nights where they don't wake you up, on them absolutely awesome nights where they sleep all the way through, are you still waking up? And if you are one of the people that says, it's because I drink a liter of water before bed, if you don't drink that liter of water, do you still wake up? Most of the times, the answer is absolutely yes, you do still wake up. And that's where we have to look a little bit further into it as to say, like, what is actually going on? Now, our body works on a body clock or a thing called a circadian rhythm. And that is basically in tune with the sun. So we want to be waking up around the time the sun comes up. And in theory, going to bed the time the sun goes down. But obviously, in the UK here, it goes to bed at like 4.30. I'm not going to be going to bed about 4.30. But in theory, ancestors hundreds and hundreds of years ago would have gone to sleep like about two hours, three hours after sunset, most nights, or even in the wintertime, and, or more in the wintertime. And our body clock starts to regulate around that. So it loves routine. And the more consistency we can have, the better your sleep is going to be. So on days during the week where you see it so many times, people wake up at like 6 a.m. during the week and then all the way Monday to Friday. And then Saturday comes and they wake up at 8 or 9 a.m. And then Sunday, they try and do the same thing. Same time in the evening, you might see that people are getting to sleep at like 10, 11 p.m. all the way up until Friday and then they stay up another two, three hours. And then they end up that, they're waking up later, as we said, Saturday night, they, wake, they go to sleep even later. And then Sunday night, they try and actually force their body to sleep a little earlier and struggle. Hence, while Monday mornings, we usually get that Monday morning feeling because imagine this is our day and we've moved this window of our day up over the weekend. 
we're then trying to bring it back. And if you've ever traveled to different countries, which I'm pretty certain that you guys probably have, or at least to different time zones, if you're in the US and you've just gone from coast to coast, it takes a couple of days for our body to adjust to that. So every hour usually takes a day. Some people take two days per hour to actually readjust. So if you imagine you're doing that every weekend, it then is like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday before we're back to normal and then we do it again. So that's one of the reasons that we sometimes struggle with sleep is because we're not being as consistent as we can be with our wake times and our sleep times. And I absolutely get it. As I said, if you've got kids and they're one of the reasons that you're sleeping late or you're waking during the night, then what we need to look at is, are you doing all those things that are in your control or at least 80 or 90 percent of them? And that's where we get into certain things like um, what else is going on in your routine. But the biggest thing is your food intake and what I work with a lot of people on with their gut health. So bloatedness, uh, the fudge, the fudge and we get skin conditions and we get problems with brain fog and things like that. A lot of that comes in from their gut. So I'm basically the guy that stops people feeling bloated and the guy that puts people to sleep. So I get rid of your trapped wind and make you sleep through the night. And with that, we have a thing called blood glucose management. And a lot of people is their sugar in their blood goes high, then it goes low, then it goes high, then it goes low. And this sugar level in our blood we need it throughout the day to be pretty steady. Because if it drops too low, our brain primarily functions off of glucose. Unless you can go through ketosis, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard of, keto, that where we convert non-glucose molecules into glucose. So if you can actually go into ketosis and go through a thing called ketogenesis, then fair enough. But a lot of people struggle to get into that point. So we want to keep our blood sugar levels steady. So one of the worst things people do, having cereal for breakfast, waking up, having a really high sugar food for breakfast, and then we spike up our blood sugar levels. It starts to come down. And then we might have a cereal bar or something as a snack mid-morning, spike up these sugar levels once again, start coming down. Then we have a sandwich or something for lunch, which is going to be high carbohydrates with the breads and there might be some spread on there, which chances are in this day and age, not just having real butter, but maybe someone's gone for low fat spread or something. And then inside there might be a little bit of protein, but it's usually quite carb dense as a lunch with some fruit on the side or something like that. So we spike our blood sugar levels up again. Every time we spike, the body is then having to release something called insulin. And if you've heard of insulin, you probably linked it with diabetes or something before when the body can't produce enough. It has to grab that sugar and take it into cells where it's actually going to do its use. And then from there, it then if it can't use it in the cells or store it in muscles or store it um, in organs, that it will then store it in fat sites. So every time we have high levels of sugar, we have to release more insulin. And eventually the body gets tired of this and doesn't release enough. So you then potentially become pre-diabetic and eventually you can become diabetic. Now, as we said, the brain fuels on this. So it needs to have fuel. So we think high sugar levels are great. But when we don't know how much insulin we're going to release or we get high sugar levels and then we overcompensate, it goes low and high and low. And that's when we start getting hangry. If you're one of these people that has ever tried to kill someone because you're late for your lunch, like I used to get, I hold my hands up then it's something which we want to rectify. If you're someone that gets low energy in the afternoon, it's something you want to rectify. If you're someone that needs that coffee to pick them up, gets brain fog, all these sorts of things, something that you want to rectify. And especially during the night. If you're waking up during the night, one of the first things I will do with people is check their blood glucose management. And in order to do that, what we do is we get either a constant glucose monitor, which is so much easier, or we get a glucose monitor that you prick your finger with and take manual readings. Now the constant one, you chuck it on your arm, you scan it with your phone, it has eight hours of data, it's awesome, but it's a little bit more expensive. The other one, you prick your finger, start of the meal, after a meal, and a little while after that, depending on what we're working with on a client. And that's gonna tell us what's going on with your blood sugar levels. Now, during the night, 
how does this impact us? Well, during the day, if it's going up and down, you can imagine there's a lot of over and under compensation, compensating for this. So at the night time, we have this eight hour fast. So the body isn't getting this food. But during the day, it's been up and down all the time. So at night time, it thinks, oh, I'm going to be getting some sugar levels. So I'll start using more. And it starts going down. We get really poor blood glucose management. When it goes low, during the night, we have a lot of vital things going on in the brain and in the body. And as I said, that brain needs sugar. So when it goes low, we send a signal to our adrenals to produce something called cortisol, which you probably have heard is the stress hormone. And one of the prime functions of cortisol is to boost our blood sugar level. And this is going into a lot of depths of science, but I want to just make sure you guys know what is actually happening. We boost up our stress levels. Our brain gets fuel. But at the same time, this is what happens when we would wake up in the morning. So our body is woken up and alert, even if it is 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning. Then we wake up. We're wired. We can't get back to sleep because our cortisol is high. So if we can control our blood sugar levels during the day, we have a much better chance of controlling them through the night. We have a much better chance of sleeping through the night. So they're kind of two of the things which I would really, really look at. What are you doing to wake up? Is it consistent? Are you consistently going to bed at the same time? And your blood sugar management. So looking at your nutrition. Another thing will be when do you exercise? Now, I get that a lot of schedules are going to dictate when you exercise. But if you are struggling with your sleep, and you exercise late at night, like even like 6 p.m. might be too late for you to exercise because of that spike in cortisol when we exercise, that could absolutely be impacting your body's processing or production of a thing called melatonin, which helps us sleep because of the spike in, in cortisol. So that might be something that you want to experiment with. And lastly as well, how do we switch off? Because over the last year, I've spoken to so many people that we want to be on top of the news. We want to see what's going on in the world. But if you're struggling with sleep and the last thing you do is watch the 10 o'clock news, chances are you're getting stressed out. Or if you're watching horror films or if you're one of the people that watches I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out There or Love Island that absolutely trigger me. But I have some really bad programs I watch as well. So I hold my hands up to that sort of stuff. But if you watch a program that stresses you out, that is usually going to spike your cortisol levels. Or like myself, a like big Man United fan. If I watch Man United at the moment, it's pretty stressful, especially in an evening kickoff, and chances are my sleep won't be as good during that night. Especially if you, yeah, this season has not been too good for us. Um, but being aware of those things is going to be really powerful. What are you actually doing? Are you having some blue light blockers to stop the false light, which replicates sunlight. Are you wearing some of them in the evening? Are you working late? Are you staring at the screen late? All these things add up. But overall, the way we move this forward, every person is different as an individual. If you need help as an individual, drop me a message and we can chat further about it. But consistency with these things isn't going to necessarily change overnight. Get consistent with what time you wake up, what time you go to sleep. Consistently try to have a base of protein and fats as your main meals, and then have a little bit of carbs around them. But if you've got really poor blood sugar management, test it to see, and then adjust as you see on the feedback of the actual readings. Again, if you need help with that, drop me a message. But overall, that consistency is going to move you forward. Trial and error. And the last thing you can do, which I get a lot of clients to do, when we work on gut health, when we work on getting people to sleep, and when we talk about controlling blood glucose, is that if they are waking through the night, have a little bit of protein before bed, whether that's a small teaspoon of peanut butter, or a couple of slices of good quality ham or something like that. Have that before bed and see if that changes when you wake up. So if it does, then it just says that we need to work on your blood glucose a bit more. But any questions on that? Simply drop me a message or an email or go to the website, ojayhealth.com, and then hit Let's Talk, and we'll sort out a time to work this out, what is going to work for you to help you move forward with your health. Have a great day.